right, uh, so I apologize for my lack of slides. I didn't expect to do this talk, but uh, I put together slides on my wiki, so hopefully it works. Um, so I'm going to talk, I guess there's two parts that I'm going to talk about. Um, the first one is why you should be using the Scribuntu extension, I'm just going to say Lua, um, with Cargo. Uh, for me, um, people say, like, I guess Yaron said, uh, with Cargo you use PageForms also, and for me it's with Cargo you have to use Scribuntu. Um, PageForms is optional, but you, you absolutely have to be using Lua, um, and hopefully I can convince you of that. Um, so I guess the major idea behind using Lua is that it makes it a lot cheaper to do expensive things to your data before displaying it, um, and it lets you write much cleaner code than you can in MediaWiki. Um, if you're dealing with a small data set and you only have small queries ever, then it's not such a big issue, but when you have larger data sets, then the template ex inclusion limit can get in your way, um, and Lua, you don't have to deal with that. It's a lot easier to write more modular code, and the template in in inclusion limit tries to dissuade you from writing modular code because then you're including templates with too many iterations. Um, but with Lua, again, you don't have to worry about that. Um, and there's also this random bug that happens on Gamepedia at least sometimes where it's as if you had put a no HTML parameter when you load the page and you have to blank at it to get it away. Uh, but that doesn't happen with Lua. Um, so if you do all of your queries in Lua, uh, you don't have to worry about that. Also, I think the syntax is just a lot cleaner in Lua. Um, so uh, you have mw.ext.cargo.query. Usually you'll just alias that as cargo.query. Um, but in particular, uh, you should treat cargo like, hi, what? Um, is that good? OK. Um, sorry. Uh, so you should treat Cargo like a third-party API um, and wrap it so, uh, somewhere. Um, so I have a module that's just called Cargo Util, and every time I want to do a Cargo query, I'm going to call that module, and then and I wish I I have some code examples, but I don't have slides. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, I guess the so there's uh, two reasons that I would say you should always, always, always wrap all of your Cargo queries. Um, the first one is that in both MediaWiki and Lua. Um, you don't have typing on the variables that you get from Cargo. Uh, so if you want to have integers and stuff, you have to apply those types yourself, but you can just put that into your wrapper and have everything be casted how you want it um, and send the types along with the query to your wrapper. And then you can pretend that you do actually get the types uh, when you do the query. Um, and then the second reason is that uh, maybe one day you might replace Cargo with something else, um, and if you think you wouldn't do that, then did you think you would ever replace SMW with something else five years ago? Uh, so even if you, maybe you have some other data source uh, that you can use or whatever, um, it just is a lot cleaner to treat it like a third-party API and have it completely wrapped like that. Um, and then also it's just going to make your own code cleaner because you don't have to you're just calling your own util functions, and then it's more similar to calling your own util functions everywhere else. So uh, for storing and declaring, you have to use a frame call parser function. And I didn't put the syntax here for call parser function because I don't remember it. And the reason I don't remember it is that it's always in a wrapper, uh, and I'm always calling whatever my library is. So I was going to look it up. Um, but you can use the uh, Lua docs that I linked later. Oh, so um, my slides are linked from the conference uh, website. So or if you go to that page, then you can go here, and then you can click all of my links to stuff, because I have a bunch of links to examples and stuff. Um, so you should probably do that if you want to learn more about this, I guess. Um, but yeah, so uh, you use frame call parser function to declare and store, um, which is fine, it works, uh, and again, you put that in your wrapper, um, so you're never like, actually doing that directly. Um, and I guess uh, one specific thing about the uh, query function is that it takes three arguments, which is kind of annoying. Um, I prefer to just have one single argument, which is a table that has everything. So you can add extra parameters to your table that you send to your wrapper, and uh, so I'll have like tables, fields, and then I also do another table of types for the casting, um, and that's fine. So you can have whatever syntax you want to make it nicer. Um, the one frustration about Lua is that you can't do named optional parameters as uh, 
parameters for functions, but you can send table values, and so if you just send a table with everything, then you effectively get named optional parameters. Um, so uh, generally when you are doing a query in a MediaWiki template, you just kind of get the query and then you have format equals template, so you send whatever data to the formatting template, but you had to do some formatting before that and you have to do some formatting after that, and in your formatting template you have to you have to parse one row at a time and also format one row at a time. And then if you want to do some things where you're displaying totals and some things where you're displaying per line and stuff, it's just a mess. Um, but if you're doing stuff in Lua, then you can maintain uh, you can maintain the pipeline that you want to have where first you're building your query, um, then you're processing your data, and then you print your process data, and you can keep everything um, separated like this, which just leads to um, much more modifiable code than you would have had if you're using MediaWiki directly. Um, so I linked a bunch of examples here. Um, and I guess I'll show this one. Um, so I have just like a lot of utility function, uh, a lot of utility libraries. I would, there's more here that aren't used. Um, but yeah, so I get data. Um, and then these are supporting things for getting data. Um, and then uh, I don't have comments uh, <laughs> saying wh where the division is, um, but this allows for data from either uh, cargo or manually specifying on the page if someone wants to. Um, and so then all of the data has been gotten from here, uh, and then the rest of it is going to be display, and I won't finish scrolling through my really pretty Monokai theme. Um, okay, but yeah, you can look at the examples. Um, so some of these are things I wrote a really long time ago, um, and originally I was like, oh, I wanna only include things I wrote recently because I'm way better at coding now. But then I was like, well, even when I started, Lua was still way better than MediaWiki for writing things, so uh, I have a sample of code that I wrote, like this is the first thing I ever wrote. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is still cleaner than MediaWiki code. So it's okay if, okay, it's not okay if you write something like this, but it kind of is okay if you write something like this. Because um, this is like, when we had the template in MediaWiki, we actually had like 30 different templates because we kept reaching the limit of the while loop and we'd have uh, pages where the loop maximum is exceeded all the time. So this was like 20 different templates for the number of teams per week and the number of total weeks that we'd have. Um, and having this as a module, this is disgusting, but it was still an improvement over the media, uh, over the media wiki code. And I know how to make CSS classes now. Um, so I don't do things like that anymore. Um, okay, so I guess uh, that's probably the Lua part, um, and then I wanna talk a bit about, um, I guess, working with structured data in general, which I think is a very similar thing because if you're working with, well, and okay, so just to add one more thing, you can also do the same thing with uh, SMW, and if, you're, if, if your backend is SMW instead of Cargo, um, but everything is, handled through wrapper functions, it doesn't actually really matter which one you're using. Um, maybe it matters to your sysadmins, but to you it's, a, it's not gonna matter um, because you have the data grabbing being done by something that's just self-contained um, through the utility function that you wrote. So it makes it very easy to later switch from SMW to Cargo if you wanted to, uh, or go in the other direction if you wanted to. Um, and. Uh, having that separation of the barrier of your utility function is really nice. Um, so for, uh, I guess this is um, specifically when you're dealing with a case of having external data that you wanna add to your wiki, um, what's the best way to go about doing that? Um, and this is something that happens all the time on Gamepedia, uh, and I know wikis that do all of these options. Um, but basically we'll get, uh, we'll scrape a game API uh, to get 
whatever data for the game and then it needs to go on the wiki. But then there's questions about how best to put it on the wiki because you want this to be somewhat editor friendly so that it's not only one person who knows how to do it and if they decide to stop editing the wiki, everything just falls apart completely because no one else knows how to use the technology. Um, and you also want multiple people to be able to do it just so that multiple people can share the workload. So doing it the best way isn't always actually the best way because it's the best way given your uh, people resources um, that are available to work on things. Um, so uh, I have this lookup module as an example. And to me, this is like the best intermediate thing. You can see the really tiny scroll bar. This is like 10,000 lines long. And this is all just a bunch of data. Um, and so this is just a Lua table. Um, and you could just do this and put all of your data into a Lua module um, and then parse it on individual pages and then store cargo there. Uh, if you do this, you might think, well, why don't I just use the Lua as my database and only query Lua? And that's a good question. You actually could probably do it that way. And I also know some wikis that do stuff that way. Um, but this does have the downside of forcing everyone to use Lua. And I think that's a great thing. Everyone should just use Lua. But maybe you have some editors who are able to write their own templates and use those templates for a few months until someone who's more comfortable with Lua can convert them to Lua. Um, so that makes, it, that makes the data a lot less um, accessible. And then the bigger reason uh, for me is that Cargo exposes all of your data really easily through the MediaWiki API. And if you were doing in Lua, you'd have to write a lookup specifically for that data and then use parse or expand templates or something like that. Um, so it's super nice to just have, um, or I guess you could query for the page source and then parse it. Or, but it's nice to just have Cargo uh, give you everything through the Cargo API query. Um, so my personal opinion is that the best way to do it is uh, one of the bottom two ways. Um, either you can do a special namespace just for data storage. Um, and the advantage of doing this is that, um, so uh, PWB PyWikiBot um, is two things. Uh, it's both the library, um, but it's also a set of pre-created scripts that you can run from the command line. And if you, have, if you have the ability to parse your text into a format that uh, PWB can understand and create, you, it's very, very easy to create a lot of pages from scratch if you can ignore the previous content that was on them. So you can do something where um, you have a data namespace and then you say, okay, I'm gonna run on all of these pages and I don't have to respect the the content that's already on the page, I can just replace everything that I want to. And then when you do that, um, the advantage of doing this is that you zero coding is needed. So anyone who can, can do it, who can access basic functions from a command line. Um, and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, cache updating for the store because you actually are editing the pages that are storing the data, and then you can query them from the actual display pages, and then the actual display pages can have both the uh, query data plus also whatever heuristic information you want to have. Um, and then say you want to just store things directly to info boxes, um, directly have data in the page. This is still pretty easy to do, but it does require a little bit of coding, um, and I'll talk about that a little bit at the end. Um, so you would have to write a script that is able to parse the contents of the page and say these templates have these values and we're going to replace them with these new values, um, which uh, there are libraries that make it super, super easy to do, but you do have to do a little bit of coding. Um, and then I guess depending on the wiki, either it's a, an advantage or a disadvantage that putting things directly on pages instead of in a specialized namespace will make it easier or harder to find the data and be able to edit it. And depending on your needs, that may be a good or bad thing. Um, and then I guess uh, if you're doing all of these queries and stuff, what about really high content, high traffic pages? Um, so I guess this is uh, slightly less related to Lua, but um, it's, again, it's very, very easy to do a little bit of basic coding here and there um, and set up really cool things. So uh, if you just create a gadget, um, you can query the wiki's API to write things um, to hard code using expand templates um, to a page. And 
Uh, I should have opened one already. Okay, so um, this page is like sane code that you can look at. And then this is not, but this is just the expand templates of uh, the first page that I linked. Um, so we have a button here. Uh, you can press refresh overview, and then that will just run the expand templates query on this page and save the source um, to the other page. So you can do things like that so that you're still using Lua and Cargo and you're still having all of this automated structured data, but you also don't have to deal with having expensive queries on high traffic pages like the front page. Um, again, that's depending on how you're using MediaWiki. Maybe for your enterprise wiki it doesn't matter so much, but we get enough traffic that it's pretty important that uh, the front page is easy to load. Um, so then Okay, the last uh, two things that I wanted to talk about are kind of uh, separate from this, and I guess instead of doing a lightning talk, I'm just appending them here. Um, the first thing is uh, specifically for editing modules. Um, there's this add-on to Sublime Text 3 that not very many people know about, but is like insanely amazing. Uh, it's called Media Wicker, and what it allows you to do is open a live version of a page in Sublime Text, and then save it within Sublime Text and that uses the API to push the new version to the wiki. So you never have to open anything in the browser. You don't have to mirror the text field in the browser. You get all of uh, the capability of Sublime Text for editing. Um, I wanted to show a demo, but I don't have it set up on my laptop, so I can't do that. But this is actually like a life-changing uh, Sublime Text extension. Um, and then the final thing was, uh, it's just, uh, it's really easy to, so this is my boilerplate uh, Python that I copy paste. It is kind of messy because I just want it to be really easy to change things out whenever I want to um, and replace with uh, whatever I'm doing at that time. So um, basically the idea is that you take all of the pages that embed a certain template and then you locate where that template is and then you just write like two lines of code or whatever, and you can replace a parameter, you can change whatever you feel like. Um, and yeah, it's uh, the two libraries that I use are MW Client and MW Parser from Hell, and I recommend not using PyWikiBot as a library. Um, so it's great if you're doing the command line pre-made scripts, but it is a lot less convenient than using the libraries that it's based on directly to doing your editing. So. Um, I guess the takeaway is use Lua and also use Python. It's a lot easier than you might think and it'll make your life a lot happier.